The last topics in this section are all related in that we want to take a step back and think about some larger picture items that we've seen with related to confidence intervals. So the first one is talking about margin of error. So, and, and honestly, it's about confidence intervals themselves. So just kind of a reminder of some things. So let's look at this example. A recent HuffPost poll found that the pollsters are 95% confident that the percentage of all U.S. adults that believe that, quote, the U.S. should take a global leadership role in trying to prevent climate change, end quote, is between 57.8% and 64.2%. Okay, so first thing, what is this trying to estimate? What is this talking about? Well, it's obviously talking about a percentage because we've got percentages here. So it's really the proportion, P. So it's trying to estimate P, which is the proportion of all U.S. adults. I'm spelling adults backwards <laughs> that think and I'm just gonna leave dot 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 because I'm not gonna write all of that but you get the idea all right but that's what you're looking for what percentage if you could talk to everybody what percentage of them would agree with that statement or believe that statement now what is the confidence interval given a lot of students sometimes lose sight of this a confidence interval is a lower and an upper Right? You get a lower number and an upper number. That's it. So it was given to you right here, right? The lower number and the upper number, they're right there. So 57.8% and 64.2%. Or if you like, you can say uh, 0.578 and 0.642, tomato, tomato. Either one is fine. Okay, now it always helps to kind of remind yourself of how this works. So you have your lower, you have your upper, and your point estimate goes in the middle. So the point estimate is down here. Your lower is 0.578. Your upper is 0.642. And if you want to write them as percentages, that's fine. Just don't forget to write the percent sign next to them. Right, it's not 64.2, it's 64.2 percent. So you have to write the little percent symbol. Okay, now the error is the distance from the point estimates out to those numbers. Right, so that's your error. And your point estimate is in the middle. So what is that point estimate? Right, well, that's the central proportion. It's the number that's in between these two. Now, I don't have my original data. I don't know what x and n is, right? So I know that it's p hat, and I know p hat is x over n, but I don't have x and n. They weren't given. So I'm going to have to find this a different way. I'm going to have to find it with the lower and the upper. If I add them up, and then divide by two, I'll know what the center of the interval is. We already ran into that video before, or that, um, sorry, that in formula before in a previous video. I wanted to go grab the page. It's back here. Um, well, currently it's page 212, but that might change. It's the end of section 9.1. But you only get to use these formulas if you have your confidence interval, which I do in this case, so I'm able to use it. So lower plus upper divided by two. So that's what I did. All right, now what would that be? That would be 0.578 plus 0.642, add them up and divide by two. Well, I'm gonna go grab decimals to do that. All right, so let me get rid of these. Now, you want to make sure you put them in parentheses first because that way it will do the calculation correctly because you need to add them up and then divide by two and we get 0.61 or 61%. Either one, they're both correct. That's the point estimate right there in the center. All right, now what about that margin of error? Well, this is an interval for proportion. All right, so we learned the formula for the interval for proportions, margin of error, way back in section 9.1. It's right here. So the margin of error is z times the standard error of p hat, or if you will, it's z times the square root of p q over n. Okay, so let me write that out. 
So the error, this was on page, well, I don't want to give a page number because it might change depending on what semester you're watching this in, but it's back in section 9.1, right? So I'm, I'll make a little note here, but it's z times the square root alpha over 2, square root p hat q hat over n multiplied, right? So both of these are from section 9.1. Okay, but it's not going to do us any good. I mean, well, it could, I guess it could now, but I don't know what confidence we. Huh. It seems like a lot of work. I don't know what n is. I know I know p hat now. P hat is 0.61, <laughs> so I could do p hat q hat, and I can get z from my confidence, but I don't know n. I don't know how many people they polled, so I'm going to have to use the other way, which is the upper minus the lower divided by 2. You're taking the distance between the two. Upper take away lower finds the distance there and you're cutting it in half because each of the errors is half of that distance. And again, we learned that formula right back here. Okay, so I'm going to take the upper number which is 0.642, put it in parentheses, that way the calculation will go correctly when you put it into Desmos, and divide it by 2. The order is different for those two. That, that throws a lot of students. So parentheses 0.642, take away 0.578, close parentheses, divided by 2. And we get 0 0.032. Notice that the order is different. So that, that throws a lot of people. Um, just a little side note. <laughs> so it was 0 0.032. Or if you will, it's 3.2%. Either one of these is okay as the error. Right? So our error right here is 0 0.032. And two of them together make the width of the interval. The width of the interval is the next question. So the width is the distance from the lower to the upper. So it's actually the upper minus the lower, right? It's not divided by two, it's this distance from here to here. So it's two of those errors. So it's 0.642 take away 0.578, which is 0 0.064, or if you will, 6.4%. That's the width, right? Two of the errors. So notice, if I took my error and I multiplied by two, I would get that. Right, because it's this number minus that number. The error is just half of that. All right, so that's an important thing to note. That's down here. The width is the upper minus the lower. Or another way to put it is it's two times the margin of error. That's the formula for the width, which means it's really direct. I mean, when the width gets bigger, the, f the error gets bigger. When the width gets smaller, the error gets smaller. They go hand in hand, right? So, and that's the question here. Larger margin of error means larger width. Smaller margin of error means smaller width. They, they are very direct. And I'm going to prove it to you. I just, I don't want, I'm trying to think. So there's a direct relationship. Very direct. I mean, very straightforward relationship between error and width. When, when error goes up, and that's what we're about to see here. When the error goes up, so we're going to increase that error to 4.5%. Let's see what happens to the width. So the width then would become two of the errors. So this one was two times 0 0.032, which is 0 0.064. This one's two times, that error is 0 0.045. Okay, well two times 0 0.045 is 0 0.09, but I can prove it. Just to prove to you that was the case. There you go, 0 0.09, it's larger, right? 
Okay, so what are we noticing? Right, when we compare F and G, what do we notice? Well, we notice that they have a direct relationship. When the error went up, right, the error went from 3.032 to 0 0.045. When that happened, the width went up. By the same token, if the error goes down, the width will go down. They have a direct relationship. They go together. As a matter of fact, they're so together that I kind of treat them interchangeably. I mean, the width is two errors. So, I mean, I kind of say a lot of the time, like, oh, the error width, same thing. <laughs> they're not the same thing, but they're really close <laughs> to the same thing, right? The error is just double, or excuse me, the error is half the width, right? So I could also mention that. There we go. Which, when you think about it, is how we calculated it, right? I mean, that's the width right there, upper minus lower. We just cut it in half. Okay. 